Hi, I'm Stacy Shu, and I'm here at the Fat Quarter Shop visiting Kimberly. And she has a brand new quilt panel. There's a doll panel for the boy and the girl, the cowgirl and the cowboy. And today she's going to show us tips on how to make the cowboy. And on another video, we're going to show you some, some cute tips on how to tie her quilt panel. And in that entire panel, you can get all of this and all of this. So, totally awesome. So, let's make our cowboy. So here's my panel, howdy little cowboy. Today we're gonna look at the cowboy. And on this panel are the instructions to make the whole panel, everything on the panel. Here we have his little bandana, the pillows front and back, the little horse on the stick with the mane, and then of course, howdy, the front and back, and the front and back for our blanket. So tell me what we've done here. Okay, so we've cut out the panel, we've cut all the pieces, and I always like to do that, lay it out, and then I'm a little particular, I like to press everything right after I've cut it, because you know when it's on the, uh, folded up when you get it, it's wrinkly and it's harder to pin and work with. So I press it, lay it out, and then we pin it together. Okay, and you've just cut right on the dotted line, nothing Absolutely. fancy. No, nothing, just follow follow the dotted line and, and you'll be able to cut it out. Super quick, super easy. The dolls probably take the longest to do, but they're small, so mm -hmm. it, it goes fairly fast. Okay, so let's sew the doll first. Okay. So first what we'll do is pin, the, obviously, the right sides together. What I like to try to do is I try to match the top portion here with the points, and then I'll match the arms. And it's nice to pin it on a flat surface. And you can kind of play around with it. And another tip too, I usually don't wash my panels. And I know a lot of people ask me, should I wash my panel before? I like the firmness of the fabric mm -hmm. when I'm sewing them. Things stay in place nicer, and it just it it's a much easier to work with when you don't do that. So what you'll do is just pin it around the whole doll. I put a couple here, and and like I said, you don't need a ton of ton of needles. The key is when you're sewing it to go slow. And I know a lot of people are like, ooh, you know, I went through so fast and the curves, and there are lots of curves. There's these little ears and points but you just have to go slow and you'll you'll get a very cute doll if you do that. And what stitch length do you use? Uh, two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I try to keep it tight because we're going to turn it inside out and we're going to stuff it so you want it to, um, you don't want the seams to pull. And is there any particular part where we're going to start sewing? Where do you start sewing? I usually start on the side here and I start and then I go down the legs and then I go around and I okay. leave the hard part for last because this t tends to be the tricky part around the neck. But I usually leave about mm, two inches, inch and a half opening so that I can hand sew it closed. And when you start and stop, do you back stitch? I do, okay. I do. And sometimes I'll do it a couple times because when you turn it inside out and you start stuffing it, sometimes it can pull a little bit. And so you just wanna make sure that's a, a strong stitch so that it doesn't pull or anything like that. Okay, let's go to the sewing machine. And so on this panel, you can see there's this white space and then you see the color and that can kind of guide you to let you know whether you're getting off track as well, even though I've left some buffer so that you shouldn't see the white after you sew. You just sew very slowly, one fourth inch around the whole doll. And this is where it might get a little tricky, so feel free to stop and just lift your needle and just slowly, manually curve it like that. Okay, so now we're gonna finish this little guy off. We're at the very end here. And then we backstitch. And you can, you can do it a couple times just to reinforce that part. And then you're all done. And your little guy is all sewn together. 
So we have our little guy all sewn up and we're now going to make him come to life. So after we've sewn him, we need to take our scissors and we're going to take off some of the excess fabric around the edge. We want to uh, eliminate some of the bulk in him. So I'm going to take my little scissors and sometimes it can be a little tedious process, but it really makes a difference. And pretty soon I'm going to show you some tips as to um, how to make the doll really work out well. I'm just going to cut around and I mean, you can probably mm, cut half of the fabric. You don't want a lot of fabric there. And little scissors and then at the points you can just cut across like that and that'll eliminate a lot of bulk and cut it straight across so you have these little straight lines there okay So we have our little guy all trimmed out now. And as you'll notice here, I left where the opening of this guy, I left this uncut. And the reason why I did this is to have that little bit of extra fabric so that when we hand sew it, it's gonna be a little easier and it'll give us a little bit more room uh, to hand sew him. So the next step after we've trimmed him all out is we're going to take so these little corners right here, right here, around the neck, little ears, the hair, and the legs. If you don't clip them, it's gonna pucker in here and you're gonna have a funny looking doll and it'll be very hard to turn inside out. So with the little scissors, what you wanna do without cutting into the seam, it gets a little tricky, I know, we just clip ever so gently and I'll show you why. See how we can bend that now? And so when you turn him inside out, it'll be, there won't be a pucker and it'll be a nice smooth edge. So we'll do that around all the curves and the corners here. And like I said, try not to cut into the seam, but close enough that you get enough ease around those little ears. Oops. And you want to do like, mm, I would say three or, or so. So one right in that angle and then maybe two on the side. So see how it, it has like a little bit more give. And it'll make turning inside out a lot easier. I'll do that real quickly. Especially see where this point is you can go just like that see that nice little okay. now we have all the little corners clipped and this is where the fun part begins so we're gonna take him and turn him inside out and this is my favorite part because this is first we can see how we've sewn and see how well we've sewn them together. So what I do is I usually put my thumb through and I want to pull his head out first. So I bring my thumb and my index finger and it's coming through there and I try to pull it through the hole there. See how I'm doing that? And I just pull. That's the easiest part. The arms and the legs can sometimes get a little tricky. So I use my hands and just oh this is so exciting he's coming to life this is the best part and it's such quick gratification you know so we've got a little guy with a head and a little body and we've got these little legs and arms that we need to get out and they're and as you can see look at, i have to point out these corners look beautiful look at there's no puckering 
it's a beautiful nice little curve and even even if you have a little puckering don't worry about it because you can kind of press that out or when you put the stuffing in it'll make it more 3d okay so i'm going to use my fancy tools to get his arms and legs out and i use a crochet hook i like it because it's not pointed so it's not going to poke a hole once you put it through and it's metal so it glides through and it makes it easier uh, mind you it's still a little bit of a process so I'm gonna put my crochet hook in there and see how I have that and I just kind of move it around like this look at that <gasps> and he's got a hand and an arm look at that and see I have a little bit of puckers but not really once you press that out it'll go away perfectly fine so we've got one arm and we'll just keep pushing out the rest and you kind of have to massage it a little and don't get frustrated but like I said with the crochet hook it's slick and so it, it really it can go pretty quickly look at that <gasps> and there he is oh I forgot one last thing, or two actually, his hair. And you just poke. You gotta have that little, little tuft of hair. And of course, those cute ears. And you just massage it a little like that. They're not big ears. And like I said, when you press this, things will flatten out a little bit. But look at him, He's so super cute. Look at those little legs. So after I've turned him inside out, he looks a little wrinkly, but he's, he looks like he's starting to come to life. I usually press him out just to make sure that it's flat and there's no wrinkles and you kind of can press out those corners because he does have the square, square head like that. And then after I've pressed him out, I take my Silky Soft uh, polyfill. I use Silky Soft. You can use whatever you're most comfortable with. I just like the feel of it. It's very soft and it doesn't leave too many particles of the, the polyfill. And I've learned to really like it. So when I'm stuffing him, the first area that I stuff are the arms and legs because those can be the most challenging. So I'll show you my other fancy tool that I use. And the key to stuffing, what I've learned, is to use a little bit at a time. A lot of times people want to take a whole big gob of the polyfill and try to stuff it in there, and it just doesn't always work that well. So you do a little bit at a time. And so what I'll do, I'll start with the arm across the way. And I use my hands, but what I use to really get in there, you might think I'm crazy, I know there's tools out there, I use a marker and for some reason the end of this marker is the perfect width to go through these little arms and legs and uh, push the polyfill through and so what I do I the marker side stays out and I use the side that doesn't have the the cap on it I take it and I kind of hold it tight like that and I push that polyfill. You can see it's starting to go in. You push it in there. There we go. <gasps> He's got a little hand. Okay, so then I just take a little bit, about this much, okay? Enough so that it, it will be firm, but not so much that you have a hard time getting it through the arm. And we just work our way through all the little arms and legs. And it takes time, but just be patient because it, it's worth it. You want to have a nice, good, firm stuffing. I know sometimes I see the dolls aren't super firm and I, I actually like to make them pretty firm. So I don't know if you can tell, but it's, it's nice, okay? And then you'll keep on doing that. I do the arms and the legs first, as I said before. These are really fun projects, and, and this is a great project if you don't want to make a doll completely from scratch, because I'll admit, that scares me half to death, to make a doll from scratch. And this is all done for you. I mean, it's printed, 
the instructions, it's pretty flat stitching. So it's, it's a really nice quick project. So at this time, you have the option. Sometimes I do it with some of my dolls, sometimes I don't. With these, I've, because they have darker colors, I decided not to do it, but you can, it's in the instructions. You can sew a line from here to here and here to here. And at these joints, if you wanna make the little arms and legs move a little bit more. But you don't have to do it. Um, they're just as cute if you don't feel like doing it. It's just another added thing. Okay, so now we've got that, the arms and the legs stuff. So now we'll go to his head. And again, I start with a small amount and just push it through the neck. And be sure to make your opening big enough so that you can you can stuff him properly. Like I said, about a an inch and a half to two inches. And this you can just you don't I mean you can use the pin or whatever you would like to use to to push in the polyfill. But this I like using my hands to try to um, mold it. That little head. You want to make sure you get in the the bottom face corner right there. That's important to get in those those corners. Look at he's starting to come alive. Look at his little face. And those ears. I was actually going to design him without the ears and once I saw him all sewn up with the ears I was like oh we have to have them. They're so super cute. We've got a good, I don't know if you can tell, but that's a nice firm stuffing on those portions. Now all we have to do is the neck and his little body. And the neck is a really important area. You want to make sure that it's firm because you don't want it to be floppy. Your little ones are going to be rough on these little guys, so you want to make sure that it with, can withstand play. So see how I've done that? a little strong neck. Okay. And now we'll just do his body. Okay, so he looks a little wonky right now, as you can see, but that you just kind of press him out, make sure that stuffing doesn't come out, and press him out. And he's perfectly fine. Look at that. Look at how cute this little guy is. I have to say, as an adult, it makes me want to play with dolls again because they're so much fun. And then, once you're done stuffing them, you do a hand stitch of your choice on the side. And because you have that extra fabric that we left when we were cutting it, it'll give you enough room to make a little stitch. And you just hold it tight and you hand stitch the sides and you've got a toy. Okay, so now it's time to close this little guy up. And so we have our opening here. We have our thread. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a good amount because you'll see why in just a second. So I'm going to fold it like that, bring it over. I like to use two layers of thread when I do it just to make it strong. So I don't know if you can see there. But I have my little loop at the bottom of the thread right here. And then I have my ends here. So I'm going to take this little guy, hold him on his side, make sure that stuffing is in there. Just kind of pull his leg a little bit and pinch like so. You can use pins if you want to hold it down, but I use, I use my hands. And pinch it, and then I'll put the needle through, like so, and I'll pull it, and then I'll go through that loop. And that automatically knots it for me. So I've got a nice sturdy knot, and then I just stitch them up close. You can use the stitch of your preference, but I, I tend to like this because it, it's pretty strong. You can do it as close 
and obviously I'm using white so you can see my stitch but you probably want to choose something that is closer to the color of your doll. A little bit of polyfill coming out, you just move it to the side and stitch it. It's really super easy. Make sure to grab both sides. Alright, we'll do the end here. So this guy, what I'm going to want to do is pull it, leaving some loop here, and just go around that loop a couple times, like so, and pull. And I like to do it twice, because just to ensure that it doesn't pop open. And I'll do it, see, two loops. Take your little scissors and click. And he's ready to go to your little cowboy. So on the panel for Howdy, we also have this adorable little um, kind of hobby horse, I guess is what you would call it. And it's a little different than some of the other things that have been on the panel. And so I kind of wanted to walk you through the steps on how to make this little guy. So first you cut out the pieces on the dotted line. Here's the mane and the horse. And then you put the, you sew around the mane, leaving the bottom long edge open. And then you put that inside, right sides facing together with the horse turn them inside out, and then stuff them. And so then you take a seven and a half inch dowel, and if you don't have a dowel or you're afraid to cut or saw wood or anything like that, you know what works well is a pencil. And you can use it even as a pencil when you're, when you're done with this project. So what you wanna do is you wanna put the dowel in and kinda have to work it in there and you want to have the stuffing around the top edge. So when you put it in there, make sure that there's stuffing to protect the fabric because you don't want it to poke through or splinters to come through. So we've got it on the dowel like that. And then basically you just gather it up like so. And you take a ribbon of your choice. I like the aqua because it's in uh, the little cowboy's uh, shirt. And it's a nice little contrast to the brown pony. And then you tie it like so. And make a cute little bow. And you can trim the edges if you'd like to make the ribbon shorter or longer, whatever your preference is. And if you're having little kids play with this toy, what I like to do, and you might be able to see it over here, is I hot glue gun the base after I've tied it so that this stick is not going to come out and it makes it sturdier for the child to play with. And that's how you make the little hobby horse for the cowboy. Have fun sewing all of Stacy's panels and you can find all of them at the Fat Quarter Shop. See you next time!